Hey everyone, happy to have you here for another episode of Legacy Matters. Today, as usual, we will talk about whatever comes up with a slight leaning toward discussions of preserving your legacy, preparing for things to come, and sharing stories we find amusing. Checking. Yeah, I think we should get rolling. All right, Hi, Jim. sounds good. Hi, Sam. How are <laughs> Hi, you Sarah? recording? Hi. Hey, Sarah's I am back. recording. Okay. Sarah's back. Welcome yeah, Sarah. back. It's uh, how many shows have we recorded without oh, you? Just probably while you two. Were on vacation <laughs> in wine country. <laughs> right. Sarah's Den- been also wine. called Denver <laughs> is wine country, apparently. Yeah. Right. According really? to Jim. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Well, every every place is wine country for Sarah. <laughs> yeah. So that's kind of the way I am too. <laughs> yeah. When, when she's in Denver or wherever, or not you know, here, it's this wine one, country. Yeah. Idaho does not it's get Idaho. cold. <laughs> it, okay. Right. So Anchorage. welcome. Well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the okay. Antarctic. Well, welcome, welcome. Back, Sarah. Well, thank you. Welcome um, to Legacy Matters Podcast. Yeah. Yep. Thanks Jim, for tuning in. Weather check. Yep. Weather check. We do a quick weather check chance. So it's, <laughs> it's a week before Christmas, it's a couple cold. days before Christmas. Cold. It is it is damn cold today. Uh-huh. It it's is below it's zero. Cold. Um, but it's a but it's a nice crisp Minnesota day, <laughs> right? Oh you know, my God. You know? Oh, all sunshine and roses spin. with Jim, yeah. <laughs> right? Uh, Okay. It's crisp. It's crisp. Yep. Yeah. So just quickly, um, thank you for listening. And yep. be sure to like, share, and subscribe the podcast. And again, we have some videos up on Facebook to show you how to subscribe to the podcast and find us on Android or Apple. Yeah, or wherever. Wherever. Else. There's all know, sorts of whatever. places you can yeah. find us. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right. Who's doing the introduction? You. All right. We have a guest today. We have uh, Chan Poling. Hi, Chan. Wow. Yeah, the crowd. The crowd goes wild. (laughs) Right. Welcome, Chan. Welcome. Thanks for coming in. Yeah, thanks for coming in. We know this is a busy time of year for you. Yeah. (laughs) Kind of an especially busy time of year. And and now we're learning that it's even busier for you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't told anybody, so I I let that slip. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, well, but we'll, we'll keep by it. the time this airs, it's going to yeah. be, right. you, I mean, you're the old it's news. a done deal. Right. <laughs> right? Well, well, yeah, we can get into that. Oh, you yeah. do? Uh, you're okay with that? Yeah, of course, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so it won't come out before this happens anyway, so it will be old True. news by the time it comes out. But, uh, yeah, you you uh, in, you told me that you're getting married on Monday. I am on Monday, just a few days from now. <laughs> congratulations. Oh, congratulations. Yeah. Yeah. I can't exciting. believe you're in here doing this. <laughs> Racing around Minneapolis and swinging through. And Well, I was on my way to, to actually buy a ring for myself. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um, and that's why I'm a little bit late, because I um, <clears throat> just kind of skipped over this part. Did you accomplish your task, though? Well, you know, um, you know John Munson's wife, Penny uh-huh. Munson, is a as a jeweler and, oh, okay. and she's oh. a designer and uh, he goes we were having coffee this morning and he said well penny will make you a ring i went oh of course like in three days <laughs> in, yeah in two yeah. days yeah really yeah. Yeah. so i'm gonna get it on friday okay good so, yeah. right. which is wow well, just yeah that's cool yeah so it's more it's it's specialer yeah more special as some people say <laughs> um yeah so i'm excited about it and john and penny are going to Mexico on Friday. That's why it's got to be done so quick. Okay. Oh, they're right. not even yeah. coming. No, and they can't make the wedding, so <laughs> I think she, she's being nice and <laughs> helping, helping me okay. out. Yeah. 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 And uh, so, oh boy, this is where this is where I probably should do more research because I get myself into trouble not knowing all of my history. Right. And I tell them this: I, my musical tastes didn't come into kind of their own. Uh, during the era that the uh, replacements in the suburbs and Husker Du and all of those people, you, your bands mm-hmm. were all. Well, they're all my bands. Better. Every one of them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, well I guess I didn't Busy. know that. And, and I grew up with that. I grew up, you know. Yeah. 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 Uh, but John Munson is, is he part of the suburbs or? He's part of the new standards. And um, John started out with Trip Shakespeare. Ah, uh, yeah, and, right. Um, and then semi-sonic. Mm-hmm. You may have heard of semi-sonic. I see semi-sonic. I am. Yeah. Mm. That was more my era. Yeah, so. and then John and I started the new standards a few years ago. Yeah, which turned out to be kind of a little thing here. It's a thing. Yeah. How, uh, how many years has it been for the new standards holiday God, show? 
oh, I think 13 years. Oh, or, my goodness. God, people can love I, it. Can I say that yeah. I've been, so I moved back from New York two and a half years ago. This is my third time, oh. I'm proud to say. And this, we went for the Friday show, and it was your best one out of the three. Not that the other two weren't great. They, but, um, they just get better and better. They get better they? and better. So I have to I have to tell you a couple of things. So your first song you're playing, and my sister, and I'm with my brother-in-law, I go, Maggie, I know the song. What is it? What is it? And I couldn't remember. I'm like, it's New Order. Yeah. So I'm wearing my Peter Hook shirt for you. Oh, cool. Today. <laughs> and then the the John C. Riley uh, cameo. Yeah. Are you a fan of his? Or who's, is it He's John? an old friend of, uh, of John's. Okay, yeah, that's what we thought. He was a okay. fan of Trip Shakespeare back wow. in, when they were, you know, back in the day. Yeah. When they okay. were all in their 20s, or so they've been friends for a long time. And John uh, C. Riley and, and I and John and Steve have played together. We played Largo together, and we've... We've hung out a little bit, so, but that's um, John's old friend. Oh, wow. Yeah. I mean, that was a treat. Did you know, how far in advance did you know that he was going to make well, it Well, it was pretty, it was kind of a late Quick. addition, yeah. 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 Okay. He's quite the singer, too. I know. He's really great. Yeah. He's, uh, I, yeah, I'm just a huge fan. We were talking about his many roles in films, about how he's so versatile. Yeah. And, yeah. We went home at, that night and watched, well, not that night, I got home at 2 a.m., <laughs> <laughs> But we went home uh, that weekend and watched John C. Riley movies. Yeah, yeah do you have yeah. a favorite? Have well, um, you know what my favorite is really is um, his um, Oliver Hardy in San and Ali. Oh, you know, oh. Uh-uh. It's, no, it's, would... it's, it's the last movie they made. I think maybe before or after the Sherlock Holmes one, but a right. recent, very recent movie. Okay, and. Uh- um, yeah, he plays he plays Oliver Hardy in, in a in a fat suit and you know with all the makeup and everything. It's just one of the best acting things I've ever seen. Just amazing. So that's awesome. my favorite. Um, and I love his song. He he sings Mr. Cell or um, Cellophane Man or uh, Mr. Cellophane in Chicago. Remember that. <laughs> mm, that's right. Yeah. We forgot. Oh, in, yeah, I know. he is in Chicago. Musical. Musical. Uh-huh. I'm not going to mention Step Brothers and that kind of stuff, but <laughs> uh, which, well, which, which that's is a, <laughs> that's a personal favor. I know everybody loves. So it. It, it's. I know it, everybody yeah. loves that stuff. He's just so know. you know he's goofy and then he's this amazing actor and I he can know. sing and apparently dance in a Santa costume pretty yeah. well. <laughs> We're like, who is that? It's going to be somebody. I, yeah, so. I definitely I picked the musical moments. Uh, yeah. But yeah. No, I like all this stuff. So yeah, well, show very well done. Yeah, that was yes. fun, fun, fun show this year. And you're doing, you have a couple more coming up. Is it going to be the same format or no? Do you have ones coming up? For no, we're years? we're done with the big, okay, the big the show. We're going to uh-huh. do play our little um, trio show at, at the Dakota. Okay. okay. After Christmas. Gotcha. That's what's coming yeah. up. Okay. I always wonder with musicians, like, does that ever get old? Like, do you? And maybe you what? can't answer that in that way, but. Like this, what kind of playing kind music? of playing the same the same things because it seems like you're just delighted by this. Like, um, it's it's kind of funny. It's um, it is a delightful job, but sometimes you just go. I'll be driving to the club or whatever, and be going. Hmm, maybe I could be be a baker. <laughs> <laughs> you still could be. Maybe there's yeah, pastries maybe in up, front of all of us right know, now. Maybe I should take up making donuts. <laughs> Maybe I wouldn't have to come to the club yeah, again late right, night. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, definitely there are moments where you think, what am I doing? <laughs> I think that's everything. But it's, right? yeah, it's a damn fun job, though. Yeah. Sure seems like it. So, Jim, mm-hmm. you have, you were talking about growing up with the suburbs. Well, yeah, Chan. So, I mean, I grew up here. I grew up in Crystal. Yeah. And uh, I remember, you know, when you guys came on the scene and, and, I mean, that was a big deal. I mean, the suburbs were, were quite um, popular at that time in, yeah. the, in the 80s. And yeah, I, I think, mean, we tried to make as many shows as we could to see you guys, you know? Well, thanks. And, and that time was just so energetic, too, you know, around here. You know, and part of it was my age, you know? Part of it was the, sort of that genre of music, too. It was a watershed moment in music in culture definitely i mean it was brand new yeah new, new wave and punk rock and right that blending yeah. of things it wasn't like we were 
doing you know starting up playing the blues or something you know, right it was all it was a new thing talking heads you never heard anything like that before right it right. was so new yeah. like you know and and i found myself being so thirsty to to yeah. just absorb I'm a, things and I'm grab all excited things. right now thinking about it <laughs> yeah <laughs> did yeah. you were you listening to it like i'm trying to figure out because i missed this era by just a few years and there's not yep. a lot of time you know right i it, like for me my early musical memory is what like like stray cats and men at work and right whatever i was but i wasn't here yeah. So this was a little too edgy. I think the the punk rock new wave stuff was maybe a little too edgy to be letting a guy my age listen to when I was right. twelve or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But were you listening to this? Like, did you have as it was coming out? Yeah, yeah. as it was coming. out. Did you out, have a yellow you, as you were yeah. coming out? You right. know, I mean, onto the scene. I was, I was right there. Like, oh my god, the suburbs. <laughs> you know. Did you have a yellow Walkman? Yes, like, I did. did. You have tapes? I, I did. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So I like, did. I did. And and yeah. As a matter of fact, it was tapes. You know, mm-hmm. at that point that I was kind cassette of cassette tapes. Cassette mm-hmm. tapes. Yeah. 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 And yes, I did have a yellow Walkman. Those things. You know, were because all the rage. Yeah, it was cool, and I think it was a little bit more waterproof or something mm-hmm. like that. So it was yeah, a little bit more mobile, lid. and it click, clipped down my pants, and yeah. I'd be just <laughs> walking around the lakes. Right. <laughs> you know. Uh-huh. <laughs> On your dirt bike? Uh, uh, on my dirt bike, yep, too. I had a little dirt bike at 16 years old. That did, it was. Did you have a yellow Walkman? Do you remember those? Um, <clears throat> yeah, I remember them. I, I never did. No? No. Okay. No. No. I mean, I'm not making a comment. It's not a, a, no. a, a <laughs> it's okay. judgment about Walkmans <laughs> or the color of them. So you grew up here, though, right, Chan? Is that um, right? Did I did, you, yeah. Yeah, okay. I, I was. I went to school though, uh, you know, college school uh, in L.A. Mm-hmm. Oh. and studied music at Cal Arts, um, and that was, you know, exposed me to the weirdos and the um, and the stray cats and the, mm-hmm. um, you know, the screamers and um, we used to party on with Joan Jett and those guys mm-hmm. back in, in Rodney Binghamheimer. They had. Um, magazine there called Slash. It was brand new. Um, mm-hmm. it turned out to be Slash Records. And there were the Germs and the, oh my gosh, X and those guys. That yeah. was mm-hmm. kind of happening. Yep. Um, so I got exposed to that kind of music when I was, uh, you know, in college. Um, it's, and came out, I remember hearing the Sex Pistols for the first time. Mm-hmm. Um and going, oh, I was studying classical, mm. kind of modern classical music and jazz at Cal and things at CalArts. Yep. Mm. And uh, <clears throat> heard the Sex Pistols and went, oh, this is this is modern music. This is what's happening now. So that changed my life, definitely. And then I, yeah, I got all the, the, you know, the magazines from New York and London and you would read all those and right. kind of keep up on all that stuff. Yeah, the Sex Pistols were kind of a seminal turning point for For a music. lot of people, yeah, mm-hmm. definitely. Mm-hmm. And the Ramones and mm-hmm. all, all of a sudden rock and roll was... Because back then you'd, <clears throat> you'd hear in the radio, it would be Journey and Foreigner. So that's the... Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Rotation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and Toto and <laughs> Toto. stuff right. like this. The Sticks. The Sticks, yeah. And so that's like... What we were being fed is like what was on the, cool on the radio. And mm-hmm. I was like, no, I'm not... I'm not buying that. Right. That's not cool. To me. Sorry. Right. If you love so, Toto. Oh, but. you can't offend anyone. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I always think, you know, and, and we talk about this sometimes. So for me, growing up in Crystal, I had the Wax Museum, which was a record store over in Robbinsdale that I would go to quite a bit. And the people that would work there, you know, I befriended. And then that's how I kind of found new music. Because here, and you know, when... There wasn't a radio station really playing very much mm-hmm. that I could discover. Right. So it was always word of mouth, yeah. you know, like either, you know, a friend of mine would say like, oh, you know, check this out and well, they'd KQ play this. Was, KQ was cool in the fact that it would play, you know, deep cut FM kind of cuts. Like you'd yep. hear, I don't know, Stevie Winwood and um, you'd hear Led Zeppelin back then, which was kind of it, right. It wasn't classic rock. It was no. like rock. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, so they were pretty good, but they didn't get into the new stuff. N- no. No. Uh-uh. You had to hear the new stuff at radio, uh, at record stores. Right. Or your friends, yeah. Did you have a record store that you would kind of We frequent? had 
at Orfolk Joe yeah. Lopez on mm-hmm. um, 26 in Lindale. That was um, uh, uh, P- Peter Jesperson worked there, mm-hmm. and he founded Twin Tone Records. But um, so we'd go there and just hang out, and just kind of go and sit in the corner, and he'd play us all the new records, all the the new Elvis Costello would come out or whatever. Right. How old would you have been at, at that? I'm just like, what do kids do now? You know, that that's uh, that oh, scene bring, bring thinking of music. you and a group of friends sitting, you know, being in a place, probably pretty cozy. They got a little spot for you to sit and they're feeding you new music, kind of yeah. teaching you these things like, where do we, where do we let the kids go hang out these days? I wonder. Yeah. I wonder. Basements. I don't know. Yeah. You gotta find it on. Time. You gotta yeah. surf the, the. I mean, I'm sixty years old, and I um, I still get on and surf the net and like go. Oh, here's this new song, and then I'll just go down the long list. It's kind of you know, how this kind of, you get kind of prompted to look yeah. at this. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. If you like if this, this, you might like this. Get on the rabbit hole of mm-hmm. right. Like, start with Billie I'll, Eilish and end up with um, I don't know whatever. Yeah, you know, with the. I do love the, the old current. jazz record. The current as a resource here in town is awfully good for introducing right. new music. Yeah. yeah. Well, those early days, you know, of sitting. So that's what I did too. You know, you'd, you'd hang out in the record store, and you couldn't. You know, you you didn't. I, I didn't. You didn't have enough money to just buy albums. You know, without listening to them. Yeah. But you couldn't really listen to them unless the the clerk would open them mm-hmm. up, slice the plastic, mm-hmm. and p- put it on. Right, you know. Yeah. I bought a lot of things just by, just by straight up uh, recommendation, re- referral. Yeah. yeah, I remember. Um, I remember when Nothing Shocking came out, Jane's Addictions yeah. album, and you know my friend was like, "You just got to buy it," and I was like, "Really?" What I'm year like, was that? I, I don't remember what mm. year, but in the eighties. <laughs> but you know what I mean, like. 80s, but, but you know that was like a, you know that was how you just kind of took a chance on music at that yeah. point, and and I don't even remember like so your music, the suburbs, you know, someone put it on a tape and then we would hear it, yeah. you know, and then we, you know, and you just kind of exchange it and then you'd buy it and then the shows, but the live shows were the things really that that we you know we, we played a lot of live live shows, a lot of younger musicians say um you know i want to make records and how do i get started and they go you just got i mean we played high schools we yeah. played we played parties and block parties and every little club we could find um that's how you get your exposure get in our van and mm-hmm. drive to des moines or wherever you know we just right. kept on going Probably yeah. played hundreds of shows a year hmm. yeah Good fun. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yep. What? Uh, and now you now you play. How often do you play these days? As little as possible. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. I. Um, uh, we did four shows last couple of weeks, and then doing four shows after Christmas. I'm, I'm doing um, playing First Avenue in February, and yeah. winter's always a little bit. Uh, a little down but a lot less a lot less yeah yeah so the first avenue show is that the new standards or is it in the suburbs suburbs yeah. yeah okay yeah all right are they celebrating an, an anniversary coming up first avenue i think that, I think or that maybe happened. that already okay <clears throat> yeah. yeah thinking of something else yeah okay so what's it like getting the suburbs back together I like well you guys the suburbs um you know it's not it's how I let me put I, I'm uh, the suburbs were Beach, me, Bruce, Michael, and Hugo. Um, we lost we lost Bruce. Um, and Michael is, 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 got arthritis and couldn't play. You know, so health reasons and and uh, Beach had some health issues and um, so that the suburbs. Um, it f- broke up, I guess, or f- f- faded away. But um, I wrote ninety percent of those songs. So um, I remember once uh, m- my wife at the time, Eleanor, said, 
why aren't you playing Love is a Law and Cows and th- that kind of stuff? I mean, people love those songs. Rattle My Bones. Why, why aren't you playing those? I hadn't played them in 10 years or more. And um, I said, I don't, I don't know, because, you know, Bruce is gone and people, the band's not really together. I have to, you know, she goes, but people really just want to hear those songs, mm-hmm. so why don't you go out and play them? Well, we had a little um, kind of a reunion party uh, in honor of Bruce's passing. And I hired a, uh, another guitar player and another bass player. And um, they were so enthusiastic and so good and so, they like knew every lick and they were so happy and the, and the crowd went crazy. And and I, just my whole mindset changed. I just went, this is fun. Because <laughs> <laughs> right. so you feel like you're, you're honoring their memory, right? Yeah, you, yeah. yeah. And um, then by the now we have a band that's um, some of the best musicians in town, Jeremy uh, Ublisacker <laughs> on, on guitar, and uh, Stevie Brancig, one of the greatest rock guitarists around, is on the other guitar, and Steve Price on bass, and uh, so, still got Hugo and Max and me, um, Janie Winterbauer singing backup, so I'm a little bit, have a little bit of melody, you know, mm-hmm. yeah. help, mm-hmm. help me out. Um, and that band is just smoking. It's just mm. really firing on all cylinders. So we're playing. Yeah, that's yeah. nice. How many yeah. shows do you have at First Avenue coming up? Um, just just the one. Just one? Mm-hmm. Okay. Valentine's Day. Oh. Yeah, February 14th. Oh, wow. wow. That's, that's a good way to spend Valentine's Day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now I know where my sister's going to want to be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that's going to be fun. Oh. For sure. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> everyone's eyeballing donuts I, I know I know <laughs> right it's almost time so after that many years yeah you kind of reformed and yeah. then and then were well reformed and brought back some of those those songs and that yeah yeah that's so right new just, ones too yeah, yeah that's right because you had a new um what was it muse I know you just came out that was kind of a big thing that yeah. that got released here yeah shortly like, too Got some nice reviews, definitely. Yeah, it's a great song. Well, Hugo said to me, he goes, I'm not going to bring the suburbs back and do gigs just playing the old songs. Mm-hmm. You know, he, he said, I had a, like a nightmare of me in a van going around playing old suburb songs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, you know, tell, it's, it's, so if he goes, if you have new stuff and you want to keep playing and making rock music, because I've been doing theater and Scoring and jazz and kind of more age appropriate. <laughs> well, music where I can sit down. But, um, so he goes, if you really want to make a rock record, new rock record, and we want to go out and support it. And so I thought long and hard about that. And I always have um, these different s- suitcases that are folders on my in my you know, in my desktop that, and some are jazz, some are theater music, some are art songs, some are Chan, you know, solo songs. I haven't put a solo record out in a long time, but, um, and some are, I labeled suburb songs because they just are what they are. I just hear Hugo drumming them and I mm-hmm. hear, I hear that style of music. And so, um, I had a pretty full folder in 2013 and we made uh, Sea Sauvage back then and then uh, was it when was it 2017 mm. <laughs> yeah we put out Hey Muse mm-hmm. so we've made two brand new records yep. rock records in the in the 21st century um and that's kind of slowing down. My folders only got about three or four new ones right mm. now. But and so you just sit there at your computer, and you and the song comes to you, and you put it in your into one of those many folders. Yeah. Huh. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I, I'm always fascinated by the music writing process. Yeah, I mean, I, I couldn't do it, but I can appreciate it. I write little snippets of things that that probably should never see the light of day and, and won't, but I have all sorts of little places I put writing too. It's just yeah. yours Thoughts. ends up being songs. And yeah. how you, 
do you in that process like is there is it lyrics first or music or i don't know anything about making music you know? well i i don't know much about it either because <laughs> it just comes different ways you know sometimes like today um i'm i have to do uh we're writing a new musical and so i'm looking for a music theater song but i want it to be kind of a rock pop musical as opposed to glenn sheen which is much more musical theater e kind of music um so I'm going through them all my folders and just dragging things into a new folder. Yeah. We're doing a, that's actually on January 18th, we're doing a, a public reading workshop, sing through of uh, our new show, Jesse James. And um, so it's, to me, it's, a, it's like a Western, the way I'm putting it is it's, a, it's, a, it's an old Western that keeps slipping into this pop rock extravaganza hmm. because kind of the way Jesse James l legend was mm -hmm. like, he was, it's pretty evil and, and, um, menacing. It, yeah. Well, you know, Jesse, it, 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 he, he lived a pretty, it's a pretty hard scrabble. Um, the re the real Jesse James is not quite as, uh, as legendary as his legend is, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But there's also the the legend of Jesse James. Mm -hmm. So the the play is going to be that. It's going to be some realistic 19th century um, murder and <laughs> and mayhem, <laughs> and then all of a sudden it'll be it'll be the, uh, the Vegas Elvis up legend. there Ooh. singing about um, what he's been you know, what he's done. So it's kind of it's going to go back and forth, but I need these really pop rock shiny nuggets. Sure. And so I've been going through my old stuff, and some of that, some of the suburbs folders, like oh maybe, <laughs> and drag it over there, and um, I've been finding some. Am I answering your question? Yeah. yeah. Maybe. I mean, yeah. No. No. Absolutely. So, yeah. Well. I, well. It's it's painting a picture like I'm trying to right. you know I, I can I can start to visualize sort of what this is what yeah. this is turning into I mean, you know what I mean a lot of music ideas just come from jamming yeah uh -huh. at the piano uh -huh. I, I mean that's what that's my instrument I don't okay. play the guitar so um so I'll be so I'll pull them out of my folder and listen to them and it'll be like um you know four or five chords and or two or three chords and me going, this like scatting yeah. nonsense, mm -hmm. and and then you're you're finding the I way go, that oh that's kind of cool. I can that melody is mm -hmm. kind of mm -hmm. cool, mm -hmm. and then I'll take the nonsense and um, start writing lyrics that fit mm -hmm. the slot that the nonsense mm -hmm. <laughs> was in. <laughs> no, that definitely answers my question. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. Uh, uh, it's. It's a, well, that's it's a the composition. Yeah. yeah, you know, yeah. that's how yeah. you're. That's how you're. Yeah. But then, on the other hand, sometimes I'll have I'll write the whole song out lyrically, with no idea what the music's going to sound like, and then I'll just sit at the piano with the lyrics printed out in front of me, and I'll just put my hands onto the cor a chord that's miraculously ordained by the Lord, right? <laughs> <laughs> Until and you then, get that. And then I'll start singing uh -huh. something. And you could be baking. I could be you, maybe you could be bread. Could be donuts. <laughs> bread. Have it in the oven and then could. just, you know, playing the piano in the intro. Yeah. Yeah. Has, has anything, like, have you ever composed a song, like, just, just you know, like, this is it? Straight you know, shot? like, some of the, some oh, of the, yeah. yeah. I love yeah. that. Yeah. That yeah. It's like the divine, like, oh, it's, I love inspiration. That, yeah. yeah. I remember I woke up once and um, I just went from my bed my feet went onto the floor and I walked to the piano and I wrote down what was kind of in my head and it was done in four minutes <laughs> <That's> <laughs> which song was that well it's, it's a song that particular song is called Frankenstein it's on um, it's my solo record mm -hmm. called Calling All Stars um, but listen to it Frankenstein were you dreaming about it or you just popped up and you're like, I'm ready to I don't go. Know. Don't remember. Probably mm -hmm. was dreaming about mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Your brain's working. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do, do songs come easily or are, or is it a long process? I suppose generally, it generally, I mean, that, that story, very easy. Um, yeah. But generally speaking, it's, um, I have to be honest about it. I can work for a year on a song, definitely. Uh-huh. uh-huh. I mean, especially with the musical theater stuff, because that's much more craft. Right. Crafty, you know. Uh-huh. It has to be, it has to tell the story, it has to fit, it has to be character driven, it has to be, mm-hmm. um, you know, it's much more of a craft. Right. So I, so I will start, and, and it's funny because my collaborators, I'm going, um, what about this? And they go, oh, that's pretty good. That's, I like that. And, and by the time it's on stage, it's run through several permutations. Right. But I need that time to, to get, because, um, just the other day I was listening to a chorus and I, I realized that, oh, I, I have that backwards. It has to end with the, that first line, you know, something like that. Mm-hmm. Right. And it, and it took me just driving around my car, listening to it on my headphones. Or no, not headphones. You can't do that when you're driving. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can do whatever you want. It's fine. Uh-huh. But it, took me, it took me a long time just driving around uh, just to break through mm-hmm, that fog mm-hmm. or whatever mm-hmm. that wall was that was keeping me from realizing that oh that's backwards <laughs> it's the creative process yeah. right it, yeah. it is I mean yeah. that's what's so I, I love the creative well I think all of us love the creative are, process yeah, you know right. and it's yeah. an interesting thing sometimes like you know the thing that's at the back you know you kind of just fragment it and move it up to the front or yeah. in the middle and right. maybe take something from over here and that you thought was over here and now it's yeah. over and the other it really is a lot like building puzzles and that sign time says that too it's like um it's puzzle making yeah mm-hmm. which is a fun you know it, it is yeah yeah that's You've an interesting remember how fun it is and mm-hmm. that like kick you down right <laughs> oh well you guys let's uh donut time yeah let's take a little let's break have some donut. Let's have some okay. donut. i baked them myself okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll come back Today's show is brought to you by the Andalin app, a first-of-its-kind digital legacy preservation app that allows you to digitally attach photos, videos, and audio recordings to the places and objects you love. Imagine hearing your grandmother's voice telling the stories of your family heirlooms. Preserve your memories, prepare for the future, and share with those you love. Andalin. Available in the App Store and Google Play. Visit andalin.app for more information. Need some help with a construction project? Looking for thoughtful design and honest answers about what is possible and what is not? Kinetic Design Build is a full-service boutique remodeler servicing residential and commercial clients in the Twin Cities. Design and build with purpose. Visit kineticdesignbuild.com to request a consultation. Packing for a trip? Let Pack Simply give you a little help by delivering travel-safe products directly to your door in an airport security-safe pouch. Unbelievably easy and surprisingly simple. Make your life easier. Visit PackSimply.com. Interested in art? James Holmberg is both an artist and an art consultant. His strong connections in the Minnesota art world give him a unique perspective on the talented pool of artists from our region. Let James guide you to an original work that will come alive in your home. Visit jamesholmberg.com to find out more. All right. Do you want to go on a wilderness adventure with me, Sam? Or maybe you know a group of kids who could benefit from an extended break from their electronics. Or maybe you just need a break from those kids. Visit earthedfound.org for more information about how to get started. For information about becoming a sponsor of Legacy Matters, please visit... Legacy Matters Podcast dot com. Then let's just start this. Oh, let's just start. When you, for the new standard show, do you, the three of you get new wardrobes for the show every year? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I figured we um, one of our favorite sponsors is Top Shelf Tailors. Mm-hmm. 
and um, yeah. and yeah, John Megan but, there is a is a is a master tailor who who makes custom clothes. Yeah. Um, and I remember, um, I think it was Munson who suggested. He goes, you know, you ought to ask Megan if he could make some suits for us for our show. <laughs> and I'm the guy that, you know, like I'll, I'll be the guy that calls Lincoln Center or something and say, hey, we, or, you know, um, I'm always, John will have an idea and I'm the guy who has to actually make the call because <laughs> I don't have any shame. <laughs> That, that, that's that Sam's, like position. Sam's position. <laughs> yeah, like we're throwing I'm out like, ideas. Hey, yeah. I'm always babbling, and right. then it's, yeah. then I look over there and I go, "Okay, Sam, Can you please no, yeah. you've been taking notes. So, right. so that's your that's your role as the shameless. I'll just do it. Yeah, I'll it just doesn't do it. bother me. Just do it. Yeah, yeah. why not? So I, yeah, exactly. Well, all they're gonna do, do is say once. no, you right? Know? And um, I got over the no thing a few years ago. So, um, <laughs> so I called John and said. Uh, how about making some suits, custom suits for us for our holiday show, and then you can be a sponsor. Mm, perfect. What yeah. does a sponsor get? Well, you get free tickets. And <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's worth that. You know, we're always wrong looking for sponsors for our show, too. And, yeah. and the question is, what do you get? Like, uh, not, not, a, not a lot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, free tickets to a show that's sold yeah. out. Oh, no, that's, right. you know. Right. Yeah. yeah, that's getting well, you somewhere. Sure, yeah, it, 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 yeah, it depends what everything. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, the barter system to me is the greatest. I love it. We do it all the time. We could, yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah. we do. Yeah. It's, people, it's ultimately it a lot of times it's the only capital we have or the only. Yeah, yeah. If people. It doesn't really matter if people want something of yours and, and you want something of theirs and just do an exchange and mm-hmm. that doesn't matter. You know, if you put this one. I remember I was talking to this one guy and he goes yeah but the tickets are a hundred dollars a piece at the most and that's you know six tickets that's six hundred dollars and my my services are you know eight hundred dollars whatever it was i'm like i'm like yeah your point is (laughs) (laughs) you want them or not right (laughs) right yeah exactly Uh, (laughs) well it looks like you just got yourself a sponsorship well, we got a sponsor on our show, so we'll we'll promote your holiday show next year. Yeah, we'll give you six hundred dollars <laughs> worth of airtime in the middle yeah. of our show. Right, right. Uh-huh. We'll, we'll talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> Jan's like, yeah. Well, I, it's easy. Well, he opened the door. You yeah. know. Well, <laughs> you gotta do it. Oh, you know, I was gonna ask you, like, you know, did you? When you were a kid, did you want to be a mus- musician? Are you doing exactly what you wanted to do as a kid, riding around the block? <laughs> or you did know? you want to that's, be a fry cook at McDonald's? That's a good question. That's a good question. <laughs> I was just reading um, something. It was, um, who's the guy, that, the author that wrote Stoner? Um, mm. Anyway, his point is, at the end of your life, you, you know, you always kind of, you're left with yourself Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it comes a time in your life when you go you know this whole bullshit thing that i worked up about my life it was just just me i could have done anything you know (laughs) yeah just it's just the internal dialogue you mean yeah yeah um and i thought that was a really interesting point and so i thought am i doing what i want to do and did i so anyway it's like to your question it's, it's it's salient point but um i think when i was a kid i wanted to be an archaeologist hmm. yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. i love history and i love matter of fact on my bedside table are mesopotamian legends and um you know egyptian um like the history or the and um, pyramids. some translations of um some of the uh, old cuneiform tablets and things like mm-hmm. that and that's like my reading material before I go to, go to bed <clears throat> still to this day I don't read you know I'm not reading the Bob Dylan biography so, right um, so I'm just a different kind of musician in that in that way at the same time though I love writing music and love playing music um, and I started playing the piano just for the joy of it and the fun of it when I was about seven years old. And did you have a piano in your house? Well, I, my, I, I did pretty quick. My parents realized that, um, hey, he's 
you know, every time I went to a house with, with a piano in it, I was a kid that would play chopsticks and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And um, so they said, do you want a piano? And I said, yes, I do. And then they said, do you want to take lessons? And I said, yeah, I do. And so um, it was a little, a lot of kids just fight it, fight the idea of piano lessons. And I liked it. And I, so I was that weird kid that actually. Mm-hmm. You were teachable but, that way. <clears throat> yeah, I was teachable. Yeah. But that being said, I was um, into jazz and pop music from the very beginning. Because as soon as my teacher said, okay, now we're going to learn Bach. I just went, no, can we learn the theme from the new James Bond movie? <laughs> right. Something yeah. more modern. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so she was smart enough to, my re- first recital was Windy or something. And um, my second recital was You Only Live Twice from James Bond. Yeah. That is so cool. I mean, what? I mean, that's about as cool as you can get, right? I mean... You know, yeah. a, the James Bond theme. Right, well, I, at that, I, yeah, I, I think so. We just did Goldfinger at Orchestra Hall. Um, <laughs> oh. And that went over, you know, still goes over big. Uh-huh. That's a power does. ballad. Right? Yeah. That's yeah. a great one. But, but there's a similarity, I think, to archaeology, you know, that sense of discovery and mm-hmm. that sort of creation. You know, you're trying to dig for something, you know, you're looking for something, mm-hmm. and that I think that's the way I approach art. And I would imagine even in your description of music, you know, you're looking for something, Mm -hmm. that composition. Yeah. You know, that has sort of a crossover. Yeah, I was always interested in the the, um, songs, I think, rather than um, the technique Mm -hmm. of it. I think I got to the point where I could play. I could fake you out. You, may, you might think I'm a really good piano player, sure, but just good enough. Well, <laughs> but I, um, you know, the rock mounted a piano concerto or something. I couldn't. I can't do that kind of stuff. But um, I've, I, I've been. I'm more into, and that's why I've always been. A, you know, I call myself a songwriter more than a piano player. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, so, but you. Too. So you've built a life around music, obviously, but you it sounds like you do other things within, you know, it's not just all uh, performance and entertaining. You, oh, you, God, yeah. You do all sorts of things. Yeah, that, the, that, that's, those are the things that make me want to become a baker. <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is that right? Yeah. Well, you I have, love writing. Right. Yeah. Writing. Yeah. But, no, Beyond just lyrics, but writing producing it. shows okay. and writing, uh-huh. but then it, but then having to get up there and do it is always a little. You know. That's the part that makes you want to become a baker. The, well, it's just yeah. a little. It, do you get stage it, fright? It's just nerve wracking, you uh-huh. know. Is it? Uh-huh. Um, no, I'm re- I'm blessedly free of <laughs> you know bad stage fright. You know, it's never a problem. Matter of fact, once we get going, it's really fun. Yeah, but it's just that drive to the club. I'm like, hmm, yeah, maybe little angel. Yeah. Donuts. <laughs> but uh, donuts. but so when does it donuts. go away? Does it does it go away as you're walking out to the stage, or do you actually have to be that? First? I gotta start playing, and then I'm like, oh, this is fun. This is what I'm doing. I forget. This is really great. <laughs> yeah. No, it's weird. Stage. You, you got to be nervous, so otherwise you're you're in a it's in the wrong business, I guess, thinking you can, you know, you have to have some edge to you so mm-hmm. you, can, mm-hmm. you can deliver. You have to kind of get over something, I think. Does that make sense? No, it totally yeah. Makes sense. yeah. You need yep. some sort of yep. wall to climb. To, then once you get up to that point, you go, oh, here we are. This is what we're doing. You know? Right. Yeah. I mean, the absence of, of the fear of failing or, or the fear of, not being your best is where's the fun in that yeah Mm -hmm. you want to get out there you want to get out there and how can you even how could you possibly give the best of yourself if you weren't worried about what the best of yourself was and whether you were capable of doing that right yeah have you ever had like a really bad show or a band (laughs) like is is there something that stands out where you just the the thing that the 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 blessed thing about it is the good thing about it is is that it's you gotta 
really have a ba- hard time to have a bad show. Right. Mm-hmm. But you can have bad moments. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? mm-hmm. But if there was like cumulative amounts where the whole show sucked, that would be. <laughs> that hasn't. No. That well, hasn't. But I, one of the things about the new standards, the holiday show, is you and John Munson are constantly, it's that banter. Yeah. Right? You don't rehearse that ahead of time. No. no it's no. just of the moment. Right. So yeah. I'm thinking like, okay, if you have a moment where you're like, what's going on? Then you guys can step in and help each other or yeah, yeah. cover I mean, the awkwardness. I think it's it's like any, playing music. You got to keep your ears open. Mm-hmm. It's all part of the thing for me. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, if there's a, you kind of, you're listening and you, and you see the moment. We talked about writing it out. Do you owe oh, that? Okay. Years ago, though. Yeah. I said maybe we should like sc- you know um, script some of this stuff out. I went. No. Then you'd have little flashcards or. <laughs> I <don't, laughs> you know. Teleprompter. I don't think, I don't think so because. It's yeah. You can tell that it's natural and it's just coming from. Oh, good. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. That's that, that's, that's part of the show. That's too. what's fun for me. Uh huh. It's got to be loose like that. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Definitely. Right. I found the author of your book here, Stoner. Is it John Williams? Is that yeah, right? John Williams? Yeah, yep, just in case. Familiar okay. name. And you better. have a book out too. No. Right? Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> Do you? I just yes. published a book this fall. Yep. Yeah. Really. Mm-hmm. And what's this? I got it's another book I have to read. Then I, I well, you can read it in about twenty minutes. <laughs> good. It's good. A, it's a, um. I, well, we're, I call it a. a the picture book for adults. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's illustrated by Lucy Michelle. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Mm-hmm. Um, it's called Jack and the Ghost. Okay. I'll look at him. <coughs> and um, you know, I've written, I've, I've written some screenplays. Never made into movies yet, not yet. Um, and I've worked, you know, song writing this poetry I guess poems and I've written a lot of poems and things and um, but I've always kind of dabbled with writing uh, and, and I tried once to pitch a book and I pitched it to like a, the, one of the biggest agents in New York City and she, she turned it down and I thought and I was crushed <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> then my friend my friend goes you know that was um, Norman Mailer's agent. You, know? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you shouldn't get your hopes so high <laughs> on your first book. <laughs> kind of, kind of went right for the top. Yeah, <laughs> it was, it was a little foolish. But, um, <clears throat> but a few years ago, I was um, I had this idea for this book, and it was it, right away. It was um, illustrated in my mind. I don't know why. I just pictured it. It was going to be this. Well, what it is, it turned out to be just how I dreamed about it. Um, and uh, then I pitched that to an agent, and she they, they liked it. Um, and so my first, or my second attempt to get a book published w- worked. There you go. Yeah. So you dreamed about this book? Well, <clears throat> no. I, um, I, I was driving along the North Shore, and I saw this little cemetery. It was a house on it. And I started just spinning in my head this tale of who the person was that lived in, on the cemetery. And then he, what, you know, obviously they were ghosts. Yeah. He had to run into a ghost and know what that ghost was and what it meant to him. And um, it became apparent that I thought, what if it was a, um, what if you fell in love with a ghost? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And didn't quite know it was a ghost at first. Um, and then who that ghost is, it just reveals itself in the end. And um, um, So I, if you read the book, you'll see that I'm obviously working through some issues that I had. Some of your own. With my own. Um, mm-hmm. But it's very simple. That's the whole story. Um, he has a, a friend who uh, kind of takes him back to life, or, you know, and he learns uh, to live and be happy. And mm-hmm. It's uh, just a very simple, elemental kind of story. Mm-hmm. But, and it's illustrated. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, so it's a weird little duck. Yeah. 
Yeah, That's great, yeah. though. But it's out now, and people are really liking it. I'm finding um, that people are giving it to friends who have had loss and they, mm. that they need to deal with grief like I was dealing with. And, um, so to think that it helps people, mm-hmm. um, it's a never kind of unforeseen benefit of the book. Right. Pretty cool. That's that is cool. Yeah, I think uh, music music generally helps people too. It's sort of like so you've managed to put out these semi anonymous ways of helping people where mm-hmm. you, you're not even mm-hmm. fully aware of mm-hmm. what impact you've had throughout your lifetime on probably a lot of people mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. with your work. Yeah, yeah. I am. A, I'm a little bit. I am semi-aware. Yeah, are you? Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. and it's really satisfying. You know, makes helps you get through the day definitely. Mm-hmm. To think that that helps people. Yeah, I mean, I I don't know I don't know what it's like to, I don't know what it would be like to produce, to write a song and sort of put it out into the world. And I watch Jim with his art too, and you know I know what it's like to live with Jim's art, yeah. and how much it means to even just what it means to my living room to have your work of art on the wall. My kids notice it. I notice it. It changes yep. the nature of that room. It does. Um, but again, it's, it's a bit anonymous in a way you, you've mm-hmm. created something, both of you and, you know, Sarah, all of us, I guess, but created things or, or help people in ways that we, you don't, sometimes the best thing is to not get the credit in the moment. Sure. You know? Well, it's born out of a love for what you what you do. Yeah, yeah. I mean, People I think of all the wor- years I worked with kids and anyone who mm-hmm. does that sort of stuff. You know, you you don't know. You you may never know the impact you've had, but yeah, you're doing it. You're doing it for yourself. Um, you know, f- at first, and if if, if it if it t- helps other people, it touches other people. It's kind of a great benefit. So when you well, when you write a book, I mean, again, you're, but you're kind of putting yourself out there, right? You're you're putting it out. You've got to get acceptance from someone for yeah. it to become mm-hmm. a thing. Well, there's it's a vul- you know, it's mm-hmm. something new too. It's that vulnerability. It's like relying on you know, you're kind of going on instinct. I would imagine, yeah. you know, but at the same time, you know, you're trying to, you know, then you're kind of vulnerable. You're like kind of like, okay, here's. Well, that's the whole problem. Mm -hmm. That's that's the whole. If there is a problem, and it's not really a problem, but that's the whole thing about being an artist or being a creator is that you always have that um, the rejection out there, and you're waiting to be approved or something. And to this day, if I go on stage and there's it's not full of people that are happy i just I, i'm unhappy mm-hmm. right <laughs> yeah that affects yeah. You. and that's and that's kind of a shitty kind of thing you know I, that's why i want to make donuts <laughs> <laughs> well you can pretty much guarantee happiness <laughs> with donuts you know exactly. no yeah, one's and it's a unless, small, unless you're a bad baker right right and well, that's so just, then everyone gets judged oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> darn it right but that's still just a donut. Just you sit can quietly in my room. Maybe. Yeah. Uh-huh. How did you? Um, so what's the? How did you find the illustrator? Or do you, have you been friends with Lucy her? Michelle, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, Lucy and I have been friends for a long time. She's a musician, and um, I played in her her record. Helped co-produce her first solo record, and uh, she's been a guest on our show many times. Mm-hmm. Yeah, how do I know the name Lucy Michelle? She she's local then. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Probably through the current. Yeah. Right. But mm-hmm. lo and behold, she's a great illustrator. Mm. Yeah. Um and of course. I'd seen her posters for bands and she did uh she designed something for the New Standards Holiday Show which had its fruition this year. Mm. She she envisioned us as the Yetis. Oh my gosh! I didn't even mention that. <laughs> yeah, I'm a big Yeti fan. So oh, cool. I appreciate that. <laughs> well, she made a poster for us a few years ago where we were all we were three of us were uh, three Yetis, and so this year we we had we, the Yetis came to life, and we brought them up on stage, and they ended up dancing at the end. But uh, was- Lucy it was it was the scientist introducing him at the beginning. Oh, right. Okay. That yes. was Lucy. Yes. Yeah. So it wasn't really you in the costumes, I'm just no. guessing. 
going to make pretty quick change. Quick change that the piano? on that piano, right? <laughs> oh, no. Did you I, it think was awfully... Chan was in one of the... It, <laughs> for a moment. Of course she okay. did. Well, I had a couple drinks beforehand, yeah. you know? Yeah. She wanted like, it We're to be all Chan. excited. Right. But I, so... So the process, so I, 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 I did, well, the process of like illustrating that. your book, did she, did you, how, how was that relationship? Like, did you kind of help her envision, did she read what you had written and then kind of interpret it yeah. into the images? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. I, um, I, I, I said, um, you know, I said, well, first of all, it's, it's, it's a house on a, on a cliff over the sea and there's a little cemetery in the back and she sent me a picture of that. I went perfect. That's mm-hmm. right. I end up changing mm-hmm. to be even better. But um, and then I sent her the the, um, the story, the text of the story, just to, just in a word document, mm-hmm. and she um, started painting scenes. And then we talked about, you know, some some of the scenes would be full color two page spreads with the text in there and some some would be text with a little um interstitial picture kind of oh, like uh-huh. um you know um like old old yeah uh, like winnie the pooh or something yeah, um, yeah. And i was thinking of eb white and um i was thinking of bemelman's you know the madeline books mm-hmm. and uh i love those ones where they were uh documenting flowers and stuff too and just scientific but not not all illustration, mm-hmm. lots of Just words, and then sketch. cute little drawings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. So there's some of that, and there's some full page stuff. It has a retro feel to it, definitely. Mm-hmm. Um, someone said it reminded them of a Wes Anderson oh. kind of feel, or um, mm-hmm. or Ludwig Bemelman's. Um, yeah, so we went back and forth mm-hmm. like that, and ended up. Um, Doing tests and then finals and, mm-hmm. and then throwing some stuff away. How long did it take you guys? About two years. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. So did you uh, did you grow up like like any other Minnesotan kid? Like did you did you ice fish and stuff when you were a kid? You know, did, you, did you camp? No, were I, you in a Boy Scouts? Like, I started out with a cigarette holder and a, a martini and. <laughs> The piano, yeah, yeah. just right there. Right. Yeah, okay. uh huh. Yeah, BMX bike, James Bond, and <laughs> off I was going to. Sharon, come out and sled. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I got to practice. <laughs> No, I, yeah, I just I, wonder what little Chan was well, like. I know. <laughs> you know what young young Chan? What was you know? Oh, I, you know, I, we used to make snow forts and mm-hmm. yeah, and all that stuff. And I, I used to love to ski. Oh. Um, downhill or cross country? D- uh, downhill. Downhill. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I never got into hockey or anything like that. Yeah. I played basketball and football when I was in school, but um, I really like. The life of the arts, you know. Yeah. I never was much of a jock, right? Um, and my sport now is golf. I love golf. Oh, I just yeah. love golf. Oh, yeah, mm-hmm. it's a great, great sport. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a fanatic. I'll play three times a week for sure. Wow. See, I still haven't gotten into golf. Yeah. That's that's you know. I like to go to the driving golf. range, yeah. but musicians play golf? really. Is yeah. it like a the, Iggy it's Pop that plays golf? Yeah. And, um, yeah. Alice Cooper, big, Alice Cooper big, big golfer. He's a good golfer. Yeah. 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 I, I grew up golfing. We, we, my stepfather was a fantastic golfer, and oh, yeah. we lived not far down the road from the Elk River Country Club, and so I golfed a lot when I was young, and I can still, I can still swing, but I don't play. I play like three times a summer, oh, not yeah. three times a week. Yeah, I can't mm-hmm. believe when people go. I only played once this summer. I'm like. Oh. Kind of weirdo, are you? <laughs> <laughs> well, you're hitting it three times a week. That's, you know, that's love serious. It. If I can, I do, yeah. I do every day if I can. Do you okay. get up at like in Florida, six in I'll probably play almost every day. Yeah. Well, you have when we're to, down right? there. This, we go out in February. Mm hmm. Yeah. Wow, it, see, we're missing I, out. I feel like I'm missing out because I know people, lo- I mean, I know that it's a lovely, yeah. <laughs> You know, I just want to get good enough where 
I can actually play and it's not embarrassing. That's where I'm kind of at, you know? It's, it's tough, you know? It takes you, you to many, It takes you really years because you get the idea of hitting that little ball with a little oh, piece yeah. of oh, club at just, the end that's this big it's and the ball hard. is this big and you swing as hard as you can. It's pretty hard. You're going to miss it. Yeah, well, I've, well <laughs> I know I'm very bad because when I've done it and gone to the driving range, the next day I'm all like, Jacked oh, little, up. I'm a little, little sore. Yeah. Yeah. I so have I'm, watched I'm sure people. I'm holding it all wrong. What? <laughs> you know? I have watched people in my lifetime go from uh, swinging a golf club like a baseball bat and, and missing the ball half the time and hitting it, you know, 30 feet down the, yep. the fairway to uh, becoming good enough golfers that they enjoy it. Hmm. That they're not. So that they're not. Hope fully embarrassed by it. and don't worry about the embar I hate it when people throw their clubs and stuff it's golf you know like, yeah do you get do you get irate when you no no you don't seem you, like you the don't guy who would John be out McEnroe like and roll where you just start throwing your club shot. across the green <laughs> no <laughs> throw your clubs in the pond no storm no. off no no it drives me crazy when people do that cuz it's like it's it's a beautifully frustrating sport. It's supposed to so, be frustrating. Yeah, so have you been to that driving, you know, that big complex out in, in Brooklyn like, Park? Is yeah. it Brooklyn Park? Have yeah. you have you seen this? Does that yeah. interest you or no? Yeah. No? No. It looks fun to me. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> like, well, it, it, I've, I, I've well, been some, once, yeah. Some people like that. About, like that. You know, some people go out and get fill their, a lot of people <laughs> go to the course and fill their cart with beer. Sure. Right. Sure. And and that's like the thing they do. And then they drive around. I'm like, I'm here to play. Yeah. And, and you're drink not beer. Yeah, you're really doing it. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't need to go to a thing and hit balls off into the space right. and drink beer. Right. Right. Because it's, it's the course that's fun to me. Yeah. It sounds really snobby, but no, that's it's part the truth. of. Uh, yeah. You yeah. know, I do love watching golf yeah. on TV. And I have been to a couple of tournaments or something very civilized and very elegant, kind of elegant and, you know, just watching the players and following them around. And it's so that's it's the nice one thing. Quiet, yeah, you know? I, I do appreciate that. A Sunday afternoon watching, watching golf on golf? TV is really chills really, me out. It does yeah. me too. I love it. It's just so mellow. Yeah. I'm, I'm telling you, my life is I don't I don't I need more mellow times. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Away from well, my friends would say he needs a lot of mellow times. <laughs> and I'm always out playing in the summer. Have you been yeah. to the Masters or any of the tournaments? I have. You I've been, have. I've been to the U.S. Open. Okay. Twice and the Masters in Augusta once, um, and the uh, and the Ryder Cup. Um, yeah, I like wow. those. Those are cool. Masters is something else. It's just a weird. It's such a. It's kind of like the Holy Grail kind mm-hmm. of feeling, you know. Mm-hmm. Even the sandwiches they serve there are like, <laughs> oh my gosh, Water, I got one of the sandwiches. Watercress <laughs> Water sandwiches. And, you know. Yeah, they've been making them for, since 1922, you know, and they're the same. Matter of fact, I, I got a pimento cheese sandwich and a beer for um, three dollars total, or something like that. Oh. Same prices as like nineteen haven't changed. Yeah, <laughs> and I just, I just had a glow about me, and I thought it was the coolest thing. Do you have Madra shorts, or do you have like plaid shorts? Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, really yeah. Doing it. Do you I don't. I don't have, have like knickers. <laughs> well, that's that's what it, I. When you said that, I was like, "Oh, do you have the knickers too?" I know. Like, think about, yeah. Well, yeah. I'm not going to go that far. Do you we ever? Have, yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. You have really nice socks on today. <laughs> yeah, you got good taste. It's the holidays. I yeah. mean, I imagine you just you, you look pretty good out there, don't right. you? Do you ever? Oh, so clothes are a big part of yeah. the game. They can mm-hmm. be, yes, yeah. yes. Uh, do you ever golf with uh, relative strangers? All the time. <laughs> do you? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, guess who's getting an email this summer? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, that would be a lot of fun. I, yeah. I'm coming be, along with this, and, but I will practice so I'm not that guy yeah. that you're just. Like, you can be the guy. Just pick up your ball. So okay, all right, yeah. okay, fair enough. That's, fair I, enough. That's something people need to understand: is you don't you don't have to be good. You just can't disrupt the flow of everybody else's and can, day, and you can't be obnoxious about it. And, right. Yeah. But if you're just out there, I can appreciate know. that. I'm yeah. still. I'm a little sour. One of my ex boyfriends. He's never going to listen to this. Um, his parents had a house in, near Asheville in the mountains, so it was a golf community, right? And uh, I know how to play. I'm a good driver. The rest, like my short game's not great, but I can manage, oh. and I know when to step aside. And she, his mom refused to pay for me 
Because she said it would be a waste of money. Oh. Like, oh. oh. That's a relationship. Ouch. That's, yeah. So anyway, that's why that's you didn't ex- stick around after that, did you? <laughs> I did not. You didn't? Good. But anyway. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, no, I think you're right. If, if like, I'll play with anybody who can just keep up the pace. Keep up the pace. Yeah, I'm the same way. I'll yeah. hit the ball in the woods, and, and, the, and the guys are, the better guys are going down. And, um, you know, if I'm not. Like, just keep up with them. If I yeah. got to pick up my ball and just right. run yep. up to them, I will. Right. Yeah. But I won't hold it, hold it back. Yeah. No, yeah. you can't. That's yeah. that's that's the you polite can't be, part about golf. Like when I was uh, nine and and playing out on the course, we would you would find us in the swamp picking out balls. You know. Yeah. That was our job. We could hold up then. When you're an adult, mm-hmm. just don't hold it up. Mm-hmm. That's right. that's the yeah. only thing asked of you. Right. Be polite. All that. When did you start playing? When I was about nine. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right it does help. I started playing the piano. Yeah. yeah. Okay. The, and, and, you know, not to give people golf, golf lessons on our podcast, but the <clears throat> thing that most people don't fully get, like when you start playing when you're nine, they'll teach you this right away. Don't swing as hard as you can. It's not a contest of of power that way. It's it's, it's form. precision and mm-hmm. form. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. So you watch people get up there and they're trying so hard and they swing so hard and yeah. and then anyone who's golfed, you know, golfed regularly since they were young, you watch and it's just very fluid. And yeah, it's, smooth. It's about yeah. the yeah fluidity yeah. of it rather than the force. Right. Right. All right, you guys. Uh, we have managed through. Another, really? Yeah, yeah. I know. I know it goes fast. It goes really fast. Um, so we should. Do, did you have something you were? Well, I'm going to show it to you when we're done. Okay. Um, so this is sort of the the time in the show when we uh, open it up to you. If, if you got anything you want to promote, oh. anything you want to, uh, anyone else you want to promote, anything you know, nice you want to say. One, one last question. <laughs> oh, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. And, and, and this is just such a question, too. But, like, what what haven't you done that you'd love mm. to do right mm-hmm. now? Still, well, I'll tell you. Um, I really love working in the theater and writing musicals. Um, and I started. In, I started in uh, right after the suburbs kind of went on their first hiatus in nineteen ninety something like that. Mm-hmm. And working with Theater de la Jeune Lune, and I scored um, wrote scores for about four of their shows. And one of them went off to um, some. One was a musical with songs, and a lot of them were just underscoring and kind of music, um, you know, background. And one of them went off to uh, to the East Coast, written up in the New York Times and Time Magazine, and it got really a lot of um, uh, publicity. Went went off to California, and um, I went, oh, this is really cool I want to you know I want to write a show that goes to New York and I've written some good shows some great um, you know pr- successful shows but none that you have gone to Broadway mm. and to me growing up my parents were music fans and jazz fans and Broadway fans and I love musicals um, I know it's weird I know I do, but I do what's, a lot of different. What's things. weird? Well, I, musicals. Yeah, musicals. No, no so, okay, not at all. <laughs> no, no, no. no, no, no. Seem like a natural. Thing. Yeah, well, good, I, good. I just watched Sound of Music two nights ago. Well, fantastic. Yeah, one of the best. <laughs> I did. Yeah. I, I love it. Yeah. Um, I know. I just, I'll sit and watch. Uh, you know, I remember when Wizard of Oz would come on every yes. year? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. You'd just wait for it to come on before mm-hmm. you know. Streaming yeah. and um, God, yeah, and so and that's you know think about, it, but that's a musical, you know, yeah, it's a real uh-huh. musical, uh-huh. right? Um, and so songs are so awesome, aren't they? Yeah, you know, if I only had a brain, just funny, yeah. uh-huh. smart, yeah. and anyway, so but so I've always dreamed of you know the big, it's like the big time, you know, it's yeah. a big game, it's like the Super Bowl. I wanna, I wanna have a, I wanna have a show on Broadway. Okay. And so that's mm-hmm. the answer to your question. Yeah. And the cool thing is we're working on a show right now that is aimed there with all the 
We'll see. It looks like it might get there. Sure. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, so Stay I'm keep, Yeah, my bucket list is All right. I'm, I'm, I'm doing my best. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, I mean, you're working on it. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. you know, and it, it seems like a lot of things that you've done, you know, you've kind of... St- you know, looked at that and then and then accomplished. It's hard. It's 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 it drives me crazy when I can't achieve something. You know. Yeah. It takes it takes a lifetime, yeah, doesn't it, it? Yeah, it takes some time. Yeah, it does. Yep. Yep. We'll do it. All right, you're gonna show us something, All though, right. Chan, real quick. Oh, On that note. Oh no, you guys. Okay. Do it. All right. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming yes, in. Yes, thank you Jim. for coming in. Thanks, you guys. Um, Thanks. We it's had been a, a lot of fun, time. and you're welcome anytime. Of course. Yeah. So I okay. hope it was satisfying to you. Okay. <laughs> of course it was. <laughs> of course. Yeah. <laughs> Sarah. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> All right. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone, thanks for listening. We love comments and feedback, so go ahead and let us have it. If you'd like to learn more about Andalin and other legacy projects, visit the website at andalin.app or kineticlegacy.us. Take care. Mm